Business has appointed the Office of Rulers and Parliaments for the Welfare of Society and the Just Government of Men and Women, we beseech you to behold with your abundant favor us, your servants, whom you have called to the performance of important trust in these islands. Father, let your blessing descend upon us here assembled, and grant that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory, and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of these islands and of those whose interests you have committed to our charge. And this we beg in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Be seated. <coughs> Number two, the minutes of the 14th of March, 2019. Madam President. Senator Jardine, you have the floor. Madam President, I move that consideration of the minutes of the meeting of Thursday, the 14th of March, 2019, be deferred. Is there any objection to that motion? No objection. The minutes are deferred. Thank you, Senator Jardine. Messages? Clark? No messages, Madam President. Thank you. Item number four, reports of committees. There are none. Item number five, announcements. There are not oh. X. Oh, we do have um, no, one or two. Motion, yes. Sorry? You have something to say. No, I was just going to indicate that um, the AG, Senator Kathy Lynn Simmons, is um, not well to the shoot. She's not in attendance today. And that's one. Right. We have any? Right. So, <clears throat> item number six, notion, no, notices of motion. And we have two. <clears throat> Senator Caesar, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I hereby present for the consideration of the Senate draft regulations entitled the Bermuda Immigration and Protection Land Holding Charges Amendment Regulations 2019, proposed to be made by the Minister responsible for immigration under the provisions of Section 102C1A of the Bermuda Immigration and Protection Act 1956. And I give notice that at the next day of meeting, I will move that the said draft regulations be approved. Thank you, Senator Caesar. Thank and you. there's a second one. Government fees, oh. Government fees Amendment Regulation. Senator Campbell, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam President. Good morning. I hereby present for the consideration of Senate the draft regulations entitled the Government Fees Amendment Regulations 2019, proposed to be made by the Minister of Finance under the provisions of Section 2 of the Government Fees Act, 1965. And I give notice that at the next day of meeting, I will move that the said draft regulations be approved. Thank you, Senator Campbell. Item number seven, petitions, there are none. Item number eight, statements, there are none. Item number nine, the introduction of bills, there are none. And before I move on to the first reading, I would just like to acknowledge the pres presence in the gallery of Minister Birch. Welcome, sir. Item number 10, the first reading of public bills. The following public bills have been <coughs> received from the Honorable House of Assembly and are now read for the first time. Their titles are, respectively, the Miscellaneous Taxes Amendment Act 2019, the Bermuda Tourism Authority Amendment Act 2019, the Payroll Tax Amendment Act 2019, the Stamp Duties Amendment Act 2019, the Exempted Partnerships Amendment Act 2019. Item number 11, first reading of private bills, there are none. Item number 12, question, question period, there are none. Item number 13, the orders of the day. There is a motion by Senator Campbell. Senator Campbell, you have the floor. Madam President, I move that Standing Orders 70 and 71-2 be suspended so that Senate may now proceed with a motion for a general economic debate. Is there any objection to that motion? No objection. Carry on, Senator Campbell. Madam President, I move that the Senate do now undertake a general economic debate based on the government's 2019-2020 budget statement and the opposition reply thereto. Is there any objection to that motion? No objection. Carry on, Senator Campbell. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Just before you do, I'd just like to um, let the senators know that we will not be undertaking the, the municipalities bill today. I think it will be on Wednesday. You will be advised. Carry on, Senator Campbell. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, the government's approach to the 2019-2020 national budget includes a combination of modest revenue enhancements derived exclusively from the existing tax code, coupled with the freezing of government expenditure at the fiscal 2018-19 spending levels, and a small increase in capital expenditures. Small increase in capital expenditures. This fiscally prudent and balanced approach, Madam President, will move us towards a small budget surplus and consequently a reduction in net debt. Madam President, this budget has been achieved following the widest possible consultation. Those groups and people most affected have had the opportunity to, opportunity to express their views on our proposals. From end to end, the people of Bermuda have voiced their concerns, their fears, and most helpfully, their ideas and suggestions. Madam President, this budget will demonstrate that the government has listened to those concerns. This budget will also demonstrate the government's determination to invest in our people. Bermuda cannot simply be cutting edge in legislation and economic ecosystems, Madam President. We must present job creators with a population that can meet their business needs. Madam President, like the economies of many small countries, Bermuda's economy is highly vulnerable to external events, underlying, underlining even more the need for financial and fiscal prudence. With our open economy, a fixed exchange rate regime, high levels of government debt, and other potential liabilities from guarantees and underfunded pension and health care schemes, changes in global financial market sentiment could also have a major impact. The preparation of the 2019-2020 budget takes into consideration these global and domestic economic conditions. As the government has limited economic tools available to influence influence economic activity, we have a responsibility to act prudently and to support sustainable economic growth. Madam President, in uncertain times, fiscal rules must accommodate volatility in the funds available for future budgets. Sluggish international growth may continue to limit Bermuda's ability to increase GDP generate or sustain employment opportunities, and increase government revenues to support the provision of services. There is a financing gap between the stimulatory policies that we would like to see in place to protect jobs and the policies that we can finance from revenues. Governments must either borrow funds to bridge this financing gap, or they must cut spending to accommodate actual revenues. Spending reductions ultimately result in public sector downsizing, which creates weakness in the private sector as well. Madam President, over the last decade, Bermuda has experienced recurring budget deficits and a growing national debt, coupled with periods of negative economic growth. Significant attention has been focused on the Bermuda's approximately $2.5 billion of debt with calls to reduce expenditure deficits and consequently the debt. The government is mindful of the effects of the debt burden on the country's fiscal posture and is taking necessary steps to prudently manage our debt through strategic refinancings and repurchases designed to lower interest costs, extend maturities and reduce debt while providing the government with the space to execute on its economic growth strategy. Madam President, due to the uncertainty facing the Bermuda economy, the government has reconsidered our fiscal strategy for the 2019-2020 budget as laid out in the pre-budget report. We have concluded that it's not prudent to raise an additional $50 million in revenue at this time, 
Additionally, the government will suspend the mandatory annual contribution to the sinking fund rather than borrow additional monies to make this annual contribution. Madam President, it is incumbent upon the government to create the conditions to foster economic growth, which will increase jobs, increase income, and raise the standard of living for Bermudians. Madam President, during last year's budget statement, this government laid out a path for economic growth that relied on a targeted investment by the government while stimulating the Bermuda economy by reducing barriers for investment. Last year's increased investment in tourism marketing via the Bermuda Tourism Authority, increased business marketing via the Bermuda Business Development Agency, and increased support for entrepreneurs via the Bermuda Economic Development, Development Corporation have borne fruit. In 2018, the Bermuda economy witnessed an increase in international companies, company registrations, an increase in local company registrations, an increase in jobs located in Bermuda, an increase in insurance companies setting up in Bermuda, and an increase in tourists visiting Bermuda. Madam President, despite these positive signs, our economy remains in a fragile state. For instance, the value of retail sales has declined in eight of the last 12 months. Some of this decrease can be attributed to the expected difference due to the one-off stimulus of 2017's America's Cup. However, we must also recognize that retail sales will continue to be impacted by increased online shopping. Additionally, Madam President, the increase in interest rates charged by local banks for mortgages and other loans means that many residents have less money to spend in shops as they are paying more in interest. Bermuda's interest rates are tied to the U.S. economy. This means that a rate increase put in place to slow the U.S. economy has the effect of slowing the, slowing the Bermuda economy, which needs stimulus, not slowing. The negative impact of high interest rates must be combated directly. Madam President, over the last year, the government has worked to attract new banking institutions to Bermuda. Although we are making progress, Bermudians who are struggling to make ends meet do not have the time to wait for new banks to set up in order to provide competition to existing institutions. Therefore, Madam President, it is up to this government to be transformational on specific, and to you on the specific supplementary, supplementaries. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Petitions? There are none. Any questions for the statements? There are none. Condolences and obituary speeches. We recognize the Honorable Member Simons. Honorable Member Simons, you have the floor. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to say congratulatory remarks to Ms. Penny Soltis. This weekend, she hosted an early childhood symposium. About 150 people attended, and Mr. Speaker, I thought it was a first-class conference. It was very, very successful. The theme was the future of early childhood education, collaboration, connection, and transformation. She had um, as a guest speaker Dr. Terry Lynn Tyrrell, and I went to a breakout session on positive behavior support and daycare. Mr. Speaker, if anybody who is a parent or grandparent they missed a world-class event, a very educational event. Um, I never learned so much about education and cognitive development in the brain and how we influence our young people. And the challenges that they have in young people eventually translate with the problems that we have today with our young people in society. So I would encourage everyone to attend the next event that is hosted by this group because they have a lot to give, and we have a lot to learn. So to the team that supported Ms. Penny Soltis and the Early Childhood Symposium, on behalf of the House, I wish them all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? To congratulations or condolences. <laughs> Over. 
Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like the House to send a note of congratulations to Ms. Judy Scott. Uh, Judy works up at Port Royal Golf Course, and she celebrated 36 years, 36 years of steady employment up at um, Port Royal uh, yesterday, Mr. Speaker. Um, and, um, oh, Mr. Mr. Navotero, the chairman of the board, would like to also associate uh, himself with the marks as well as the whip, uh, Mr. Lawrence Scott. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, um, I don't know if you know Judy or not, but um, not only has she been working at Port Royal for 36 years, but I, I don't know too many more people who are dedicated as her, Mr. Speaker. Um, she makes early hours and works late days. Uh, if you call up to Port Royal at any time during the week, uh, any time after 6.30, 6.35, you'll find that she answers the phone. So uh, I certainly uh, congratulate her and her dedication to uh, her job and to Port Royal Golf Course. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Does any other member wish to I recognize Honorable Member Tyrrell? Honorable Member, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, all. Mr. Speaker, I would ask if um, uh, condolences could be sent to the family of the late Lawrence Meredith Davis, uh, affectionately known as Larry, um, of Turnstile Lane, Pembroke, um, he leaves uh, to mourn his wife, Madeline, daughter, Lisa, and son, Craig. Uh, Larry uh, was very popular in the community uh, because I believe that he was one of the founders of the uh, Bermuda Island Pipe Band, and um, he was very active in the uh, Masonic fraternity as well, and I think he'd be sorely missed uh, by all his friends and family. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Member, if there's any other honorable member to speak, no other honorable member? Recognize Mr. Famous. Famous, you have the floor. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm just going to step slightly out of the comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> Easy, Cousin Rufus. I just, want to take, I just want to take a moment to thank my predecessor, MP Bob Richards, Finance Minister, for a very well balanced op ed in today's paper outlining exactly what the EU is doing, not only to Bermuda, but to all offshore jurisdictions. I hope this doesn't get me kicked out of the PLP, but I had to speak truth to Paul. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> now everyone's going to race and read the story. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Birch? Oh, no, no, okay. No other member? Well, we'll move on from the condolences and congratulations. Uh, matters of privilege, there are none. Personal explanations, there are none. No, notice of motions for the adjournment of the House on matters of urgent public importance, there are none. Introduction of bills. Orders of the day. Orders of the day. We have, for the listening audience, today we, um, we're going to, members, we're going to seek your indulgence for a moment. There was a, a motion that should have been attached to the statement that the um, Premier gave, and he just wants to table that. Yes, it's, it's just the. Yeah. Seek your indulgence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, uh, at, at pursuant to the ministers and members of the Legislature Salaries and Pensions Act 1975, I give notice that at the next day of meeting I will move to propose the following motion, that be it resolved that the previous resolutions of this House made pursuant to Section 2 of the ministers and members of the Legislature's Pension Act be revoked, and that there be a motion laid that the salaries that were for ministers and members be unchanged until the 30th of June 2019. Okay. No objections to that, right? Okay. Now we're on to the orders of the day. And for the listening public, today is actually the conclusion of the annual budget debate. And this morning we'll start with the Ministry of National 
of uh, national security, and they have three hours this morning for a debate on that, and then we'll move on into the cabinet office and other ministries later. But the, for clarification for those listening and in, in the chamber, the non-ministries items will be uh, not debated today, even though they were on the paper. They will not be included in the discussion on that. Okay? Yeah. And all, all sides were in agreement to that conversation, correct? Okay. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there before we got to so it was, it was out there. Now, now, the Madam, Madam, Madam who's taking the chair, uh, before you get up, the minister, I'm looking for the minister, who's going to move us? No, okay. Minister of Finance? It's, um, Mr. Speaker, I will move on behalf of the uh, Minister of Finance. Your whip just came here just now and you saw me inside just now. Did you guys just read you and I didn't come in? Yeah, I saw you. I saw you went to the room and you Right, you don't go to the As I came into the church just now, she came inside before I come in. She said, "Oh, we decided not to come now because everything else is going." No, we didn't decide that. But no, that's what she just said to me. Okay. I'm just, I'm just saying what she said to me. All right, so so on the moment, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Is I was thinking. She said, "Don't make sense." Let me get the two the numbers. Now, I'm going to go by the way. Yeah, yeah. Because see, here's what I had done. Correct. Look, here's what I had done. I had done here. I was going to not get to get five and get eight and get in my name. That's what I was going to do. She just said to me, she just said to me that you were in there. That didn't make sense. Okay. So, so I can take it back. I can clean it up. I can clean it up. I don't mind cleaning it up. Okay? I don't mind cleaning it up. I'm really going to buy what she She just came in the office just now. That's the boy walked in there. She said, you guys decided to make sense to So do you still want to do that one there? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Members, thank you for your indulgence. The, and which head is that? 60. He had 63. will still be done um, under those discussions. There was a clarification that was just required, so I, I appreciate your indulgence. Are we good? Any further clarification on that, or let me know before now? The original discussion was that 98, 2, and 5 were the heads that would, be, would not be done. Okay, good. Um, the Deputy Premier, are you going to move us into committee? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I will move on behalf of the Ministry of, of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House to now resume in Committee of Supply to consider the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2019-2020. The Chair. I recognize Mr. Uh, Honorable Member Commission. You take the chair.
Good morning, members. We are now in Committee of Supply for further consideration of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the year. The following heads are to be debated, and those heads are We're only, we're only addressing one head at this point, and that's head 27. Thanks for the clarification. The chair will now recognize the honorable and learned minister, uh, Mr. Wayne Keynes. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please, you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I move head 27. Immigration will now be, ta now be taken under consideration. Mr. Chairman, it, Mr. Chairman, it gives me great pleasure Crave the indulgence, Mr. Chairman. I just have to move a bit of my papers around. Crave the indulgence. Take your time, Minister. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it pleases you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it gives me great pleasure to present the budget for Head 27, the Department of Immigration, found at page B289 to B294 of the budget book. The mission of the Dep Bermuda Department of Immigration is to, to serve, conserve, and to protect Bermuda for the benefit of its people, residents, and visitors. Mr. Chairman, the expenditure overview is as follows. As noted on page B289, the Department of Immigration has been allocated a budget of $4,754,000 for the fiscal year 2019-2020. This budget numbers remains the same as 2018-2019, thus reflecting a nil percent increase for 2019-2020. Excuse me, Minister. Uh, members, I, I know you have to confer. Just bring it down a little bit. Uh, you may proceed, Minister. The, minister. the ministerial changes in the estimated budget for the subjective analysis for the current uh, uh, account estimates as compared to 2018-2019 uh, revised column fine combined is found on page B290 as follows. There is a mine increase of $108,000 or a 3% increase in salaries which is listed in line item 1. There is a slight increase mainly due to salaries for temporary relief and recently negotiated pay increase for 2%. A decrease in 4,000, which represents a 57 decrease in the advertising and promotion, which is listing, listed on line item 8. A decrease in $54,000, which represents a 25% decrease in professional services, which is listed on item 9. A decrease, a decrease in 68,000, which re re represents a 74% decrease in rental services, which is listed on item 10 an increase of 52000 which represents a 13% increase in repair and maintenance, which is list listed on item 11. A decrease in $24,000, which represents a 25% decrease uh, in materials supplies, which is listed on item 13. Revenue summary, Mr. Chairman. The rev revenue summary is outlined on page 290. The total revenue estimate for 2019-2020 as compared with 2018-2019, revised column 5 is $21,835,000, an increase of $3,130,000, an increase of $3,130,000, or 17%. The most material changes are as follows. The land acquisition fees for 1920 has increased significantly at $3,000,000, 86,000, which represents 100 a 180% increase over the revenue for 2018-2019, which is listed in line item 8. The land acquisition fees increased from $2,414,000 to $5,500,000. Entry clearance fees for 2019-2020 decreased by $58,000, which represents a 60% decrease in variance to 2018-2019 which is listed on line item 1. The residence fees listed in line item 9 for 2019-2020 has decreased by $45,000, which represents 48, a 47% decrease 
of, for revenue for 2018-2019. Listed on item 11, the nationality fee of 2019-2020 has decreased by $50,000, which represents a 43% decrease in, over the revenue for 2018-2019. The status and naturalization fees listed on line item 12 for 2019-2020 has increased $139,000 which represents a 27% increase over the revenue in 2018-2019. There is a decreased estimate for penalties listed on line item 13, issued by $44,000, which represents a 56% decrease over revenue in 2018-2019. Mr. Chairman, capital expenditure. Funds budgeted for capital acquisitions for 2019-2020 amounts to $1 million $927,000, which can be found on C-14. The amounts allocated include the amount of $1,927,000 will be allocated to purchase a new border, border management system to replace the aging border management system. We estimate the cost of implementing this new system will exceed this amount. You, you, you can Manpower. Mr. Chairman, the manpower estimates for the department as outlined on B291 are 50 full-time posts. Within the department, there are four vacant posts, which consist of one customer service representative, one assistant chief immigration officer, one, man one, man one manager of finance and administration, one business systems officer. Approval has already, already been granted to fulfill these positions. It is expected that all posts will be filled during this quarter of fiscal 1920. Note the Assistant Chief Immigration Officer and Manager of Finance Administration position became vacant due to the retirement of each of two people, Mr. Stephen Lambert and Ms. Dwinette Bean, in May and September, respectively. The Department Performance Manager are outlined on pages B292 and B294. During the fiscal 2018-2019, staff in the Department of Immigration have worked, worked diligently, courteously, and impartially to accomplish their mandate. Major policy changes. Mr. Chairman, since my appointment as Minister Responsible for Immigration on the 1st of November 2018, I have spent the time getting acclimated with the immigration law and the immigration policies. I have met with key stakeholders and placed emphasis on comprehensive immigration reform. To date, there have been no major policy changes, plans for the upcoming year. Mr. Chairman, the Department's plans for the upcoming year include a focus on comprehensive immigration reform and the development of and implementation of a new border management system. Mr. Chairman, comprehensive immigration reform. A roadmap towards realization, real, the realization of comprehensive immigration reform comprises of four stages. One. The first phase was completed in early December 2018, and it was related to work permit processing. The remaining phases are process improvement, immigration reform, operations and systems executions. All phases have a first step in securing project team and resources. The process imp improvement phase is due to start in April 2019. It will entail a review of immigration, review of immigration work workflows and will address the bottlenecks, applications, and processes. The immigration form, re reform phase is at the center of the overarching reform and will emphasize policy de de development, public consultation, and the drafting of legislation. The, the ministry aims to bring legislation to the House by July 2019. The operation systems and the execution phase will be the output and work done in the first two phases. The time frames for the final phase is yet to be determined and will entail a procurement process for the revision of vendor contracts and forms and change management and staff training. Mr. Speaker, the new border management system. For the past two years, the budget brief, excuse me, in the past two years, the budget brief for the department highlighted plans to re replace the current budget management system. As a reminder, the budget, excuse me, the border, thank you, the border Management system is one of Bermuda's frontline defenses 
used to screen arriving passengers who arrive at the LFW International Airport. The system processes passenger information against a variety of local and international alerts, such as the stop list, the watch list, the terror list upon a person's arrival in Bermuda, and it alerts officers to critical information in real time. It also allows for the detection of overstays and provides a detailed travel history record that is used for investigation purposes. The 3M Innovative Properties Company, or 3M, developed the BMS in mid-2000. Significant steps have been taken uh, to advance the plans to re replace the current, the current BMS system. Our RFP was posted mid-summer 2018, and four vendors provided quotes uh, for the process. The new vendor has been selected, and the department will shortly enter into the contract implementation phase of this project. Without question, the new border management system will, will align the industry standards for both locals and visitors alike, and, it will be, and we, visitors and locals will be pleased with the processing process upon arrival in Bermuda. The implementation of the new border management system will be completed prior to the opening of the airport in 2000, the Aleph Wade New Airport in 2020. Mr. Chairman, another key component, Mr. Chairman, will be a pilot program that the department is internet, uh, hoping to roll out with key partners. We have taken the opportunity to talk with the international stakeholders, a bear, a BIC, the Chamber of Commerce, and other stakeholders. And they have shared with the ministry staff that there is a significant waiting period that is causing deep concern with reference to processing work permit applications. Mr. Chairman, we are looking at a pilot program with two companies, Sumpo International and Liberty Mutual. This will be a program that allows for us to put together a plan that allows us to look at key performance matrices in each company to determine whether or not they can have a fast-tracked uh, work permit policy process. That is, in its genesis, we are looking to do a trial run with two companies. What does that look like? Well, we will look at the training and development program for Bermudians. What does their commitment to Bermuda look like? How much revenue on a yearly basis they bring to our shores? How are the, what is the Bermuda uh, uh, expat ratio? What does the internship program look like? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's almost akin to the, uh, the American, if I had to draw an analogy, it's almost akin to the global entry process when you're traveling to other parts of the world. It is not void of an immigration process, but, through an e fr but from an initial vetting process, when work permit applications come, they will not necessarily go through the rigor as all the, the rest of the, the, the applications that come through. It will be a vetting process, but they would have already gone through a vetting process over a period of time. We believe that this is an excellent opportunity for us to fast track, if you please, a number of the applications. But when we say fast track, it should not be misconstrued for not going through the necessary uh, rigor of the process. We believe that this is a necessary step. We are starting with a pilot program with two companies, Liberty uh, Mutual and Sampo International. We have a, 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 a secured, uh, we have a company that we are looking at to go through the process management process, uh, uh, plan and then hopefully we will be able to formally announce this in the not too distant future. In closing, I would like to thank the dedicated members and staff of the Department of Immigration. I would like to thank the immigration team under the leadership of Dr. Danette Ming, the Chief Immigration Officer, together with Mr. Philip Paranchi, Ms. Lauren Sadler-Best of the Attorney General's Chambers, Mrs. Renee Ming, Chairman of the Immigration Appeal, excuse me, Renee, MP Renee Ming, the Chairman of the Board for the, for the, the Immigration Board, and the Appeals Tribunal headed by Mr. Charles Richardson for their work and dedication in 2018-2019. First, also, I would like to thank Ms. Marita Grimes, Michelle White, and Mr. Ron McCall Davis and their respective teams, as well as the Collector of Customs, Ms. Lucinda Pierman and her airport team for administering the airport border control on behalf of the De Department of Immigration. We would also like to thank the Information and Digital Technology Office for their timely assistance in assuring that our systems were operable 
and particularly at the Al F. Wade International Airport. They have all been very cooperative and innovative in their respective disciplines, and their roles have played a significant part in achieving immigration goals and objectives. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Minister. Are there any other members that wish to address this respective head? The chair now recognizes the um, shadow minister of national security uh, who will address or respond on head 27. That's Mr. Sylvan Richards. Thank you, acting chair. I'll start off by making some brief remarks. As we all know, immigration is a very important part of Bermuda. It's a very important part of ensuring that our business community thrives. It's a very important part of ensuring that Bermudians and others who live and reside and work in Bermuda are able to travel efficiently and effectively. So, in my view, next to the Ministry of Finance, the Department of Immigration comes on very close second. <laughs> I beg to differ. I beg to differ, Honorable Member. So, it's very interesting to me that we're debating Im immigration, head number 27, found on pages B289 to pages B294 of the budget book and also on page C14. Members will be aware that in addition to being a member of this honorable house, I also work at Ally World Assurance Company, an exam company in Bermuda and that the topic of immigration is always a, a current and a hot topic, especially when it comes to the processing of work permits. I was very pleased to take note when Minister Keynes was appointed as the Minister of Home Affairs, because at that time there was an ongoing backlog of work permits that had accumulated over a period of time. I was very concerned about it, as were others in international business. And to the minister's credit, he came in and in short order cleared up that backlog. And at the time, I did have concerns that in the, his laser-like focus to clear up that backlog, that Bermudians weren't being disadvantaged. But I trust the minister, he came in. And I think a large portion of it has to do with the fact that he came from the private sector. He understands how things work. He understands what needs to be done. And there's a fine balance to trod whenever we talk about immigration. It's very emotive for some, for some folks. And for others, we take a very pragmatic approach. We realize that there are things that we need to ensure are working efficiently and immigration is one of those. So with those comments, I'll dive into the budget book. And I'll make one more comment before I do that, and it kind of ties in to the comments that the Minister of Public Works made during his debate on Friday about how the numbers in the budget book are actually shown. Now for those listening at home, I'll try and break it down so that it's clear. When we're looking at the budget book, there are some heads that compare the original numbers from 2018-2019 to the estimated numbers 
for 2019-2020. Then there are departments such as immigration that compare the revised 2018-2000 numbers, which are actual numbers, which are more accurate than comparing to the original. Because the originals were estimates. The revised are actuals. So, okay. The revised are revised, but they're more, they're more accurate numbers than comparing to the originals. So my point is that in the budget book, when you look at the numbers, it's not apples to apples in a lot of cases. So I would encourage the finance minister, whoever makes these, the wise heads who makes these decisions, to at least be consistent so that ministers and shadow ministers, when they get to their feet, aren't having to adjust the numbers in the budget book to reflect a more accurate comparison. So to this minister's credit, for head number 27, we're comparing 2018-2019 revised numbers to 2019-2020 estimate numbers, which in my view is the way it should be done. So we're starting on page B289, expenditures per business unit. I've noted that program number 2702 and business unit 37010 corporate services are up 2%. I've also made note that program number 2703, business unit number 37040, finance and administration, is up 35%. I would like the minister to give us a little bit more information on what is driving this 35% increase. On page B290, expenditures by object code, I've noted that salaries, overall salaries are up 3% or $108,000. The minister probably touched on it in his brief. I believe it's because of the 2% increase that were given to civil servants, but if he can just confirm that. Also, I noted that the number of employees are projected to remain flat at 50, although the minister did mention that there are, I believe, four vacancies to be filled. If he could go over that again. Uh, they were included in the 50, okay. So, what accounts for the increase in the salary figure of 3%? But if you could just go over those additional, those vacant posts that are being filled, that would be helpful. I didn't get it all, all down. Also on page B290, professional services are projected to increase 210% when comparing 2019-2020 numbers to 2018-2019. I would like to get information on what are government's plans to increase the number of consultants. Usually, usually when you seek professional services, I, I, I'm assuming that they're consultants. So if the minister could give uh, information on that, it would be very helpful. And I've noted that overall expenditures are projected to increase 11% in 2019. 2020. Moving along to the revenue summary on page B289, core center, line one, 8275, entry clearance. This revenue is projected to decrease 60% or $58,000. I would like to know what is the reason for this projected decrease in revenues from entry clearance? On cost center, 8285 work permits, that's on line three of the budget book. Excuse me. I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's line one, two, three, four, five. Work permits, work and reside of the budget book. 
Revenues are projected to decrease 11% when comparing 2018-2019 to 2019-2020. However, in 2017-2018, this category had actual revenues of $1,249,000. In 2018-2019, actual revenues dropped to, uh, to $850,000. And in 2019-2020, estimated revenues are projected to be $759,000, which amounts to a 39% decrease in revenue over three years. This is a worrying trend and I would like for the minister to give information on what are government's plans, if they have any, to reverse this trend. Because there are some who say that Bermuda needs to increase our basic resident population. So I'd like to get a little more information around that. In core center, 8291, land acquisition fees. Revenues are projected to increase 128% from 2.4 million in 2018-2019 to 5.5 million in 2019-2020. I would like the minister to provide information on what is driving this huge increase in revenues. Is government anticipating more non-Bermudians acquiring property in 2019-2020, or is there another reason for the projected 128% increase? So I would like the minister to give more information based off of that. Looking at cost center, 8293, residence fees, revenues are projected to decrease. 47%. I would like to get an additional information on the 47 projected, 47% projected decrease in revenues. In core center, 8299. Nationality. Revenues are projected to decrease 43%. I would like for the minister to give an explanation for this decrease. And in core center, 8301, status and naturalization, dash other, revenues are projected to decrease 27%. Sorry, to increase 27%. I would like to get an explanation from the minister. What is the driver of this increase? And to sum up revenues for 2019-2020, projected revenues, these revenues are projected to increase 17% in 2019-2020 overall. Moving to page B291, the budget book, employee numbers. As I touched on earlier, number of employees are projected to remain flat at 50 Yes, salaries are projected to increase by $108,000 or 3% in 2019-2020. Moving to page B292 of the budget book, performance measures. And we're looking at business unit 37010. And under the column, Line number three, number of work permits processed. In 2018-2019, the number of work permits processed was 4,614, and in 2019-2020, it's projected to be 5,075, which is an increase of 461 work permits. I would like for the minister to give an explanation of what accounts for this projected 10% increase. On line 370, business, excuse me, business unit 37010, 
civil penalties. In 2018, 2019, the original forecast was 15, which was revised in 2018, 2019 to 148. In 2019, 2020, the forecast number is 163. I would like to, for the minister to put some color around the jump and revised numbers, forecast numbers in 2018, 2019, from 15 to 148. And in business unit, on the business unit 37020, personal services, there's a line item, permission to acquire land. In 2018, 2019, the number of permissions forecast at 70. And in 2019, 2020, the number of permissions are forecast at 77, which is a difference of seven permits. However, when you look at the revenue from land acquisition fees, as shown in Core Center 8291 on page 290, it's projected to increase by just over $3 million, actually $3.086 million, which is an average of $442,857 per permit. I'm curious if I'm looking at this correctly, if the minister can add some, some color around that. And then moving to page C14, capital acquisitions. The minister went into great detail in his remarks about the border control system. In 2019-2020, the budget is just over $1.9 million, and of course zero was spent in 2018-2019. So the minister went into pretty great detail about that. Um, I'll touch base on that aspect after the minister answers the questions that I just posed to him. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Shadow Minister. The, uh, are there any other members that wish to uh, address this uh, head? The chair now recognizes the honorable member from constituency 23. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, in looking at head 27 immigration, and I understand the sentiment that is being expressed in terms of the comparison of which number is appropriate year on year. And while it may be the nice thing to do, because it appears to be more updated, to look at revised numbers, it's important to note, Mr. Chairman, that the House approves the original budgets. And that is what we should be looking at year on year on a consistent basis, ministry to ministry. So I think we have to take away the subjectivity and decide what the personal preferences are and look at the exercise itself. When we approve budgets, we approve the original budget for the year. So therefore, we should be looking at, on a comparative basis, what do we have originally from last year, which the House approved. The House has not approved the revised budgets. The revised budgets are informational and perhaps more accurate. And I'm not saying that we disagree, but at no point have we come in with supplementaries to change the originals to the revised so that the House agrees it. And that's the reason why it's difficult to accept the premise that it's appropriate to look at 1920 estimates as against the revised because the House has not approved the revised. So with that said, when I looked at my comments, Mr. Speaker, I want to go to page B290. And we had initially, under head 8291 on the revenue source, the House had projected $7 million in land acquisition fees. The projected going forward for 1920 is $5,500,000. So instead of seeing an increase of $3,086,000, we actually have a decrease of 150, of 1.5 million. And so the question that begs is, 
why we had such a, a cataclysmic drop of $1.5 million on land acquisition fees from the original of last year and the revised, I'm sorry, and the new number for this year. And I'm, I'm just pointing that particular one out because it is such a large number, but the premise remains the same in terms of how we should be looking at these numbers based on what the House approved and what we're now looking at. The minister indicated about the work permit policy that has been um, um, tested on two particular companies. And it will be useful to understand why those two particular companies. Could the minister give us some indication as to what the staffing levels are in respect of the two companies that they chose in looking at the relationship between locals and foreign uh, employees and that, that would give those companies preferential treatment, or not preferential treatment, but um, to allow them to pilot the program that will allow them to effectively fast track a la global entry, as he mentioned. Now, I'm just be curious about that. The other thing that I wondered whether it was being examined at all is the relationship between the provision of work permit applications for foreign workers performing the exact same duties as local workers but being treated in a tremendously preferential manner. Is that something that's being looked at either in terms of human rights as, a, as relates to immigration or is there any justification that a position that one person has that pays $100,000 a year that somebody else can come in in that very same position and make $150,000 a year because that person is foreign. And there are benefits such as housing allowance, things that locals do not get, but the presumption has to be that remuneration is for doing the job and not based on the origin of the person doing the job. I'm just curious how or if this can be addressed because it's a vexatious issue. The other thing that I would like for the minister to explain if he could is to give us some indication as to where we are in respect of the output measures on page B292 with respect to passports. We know that we have had a challenge which arose at the end of 2015, I believe it is, with respect to the, the change of the production of passports from the Bermuda, or the printing of passports from the Bermuda Immigration Office to the UK uh, Immigration Office, HMPO, Her Majesty's Passport Office. And the the production of those passports under HMPO has changed the nomenclature for the place of, 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 um, of dispatch from BMU, which is Bermuda, to GBD or GBR, depending on what iteration one has of that passport. And it creates challenges in terms of border and free access coming into the United States from points foreign. And it causes a challenge for Bermudians. So the question is, we had looked at before whether there was the possibility of being able to, we had looked at whether there was a possibility of being able to change the um, the nomenclature to change the code back to BMU by some possibility. And one of the solutions that was recommended by the then PS 
was that one of the solutions that was recommended was in fact the fact that they could, under HMPO, effectively utilize a plate in their system so that even though they are processing in the UK, they are processing on behalf of the Bermuda government. And the reason that this difference is important, Mr. Chairman, is because there are special arrangements between Bermuda and the United States that the UK does not have. So while it may be a problem, why, you know, while, while it may not be a problem to them to say that we're issuing this in Great Britain, therefore that's the, that's the code that you get, it causes inconvenience for Bermuda travelers when we don't have every border um, um, customs and, and border patrol um, system in the United States recognizing this preferential treatment. And I think that to the extent that we can get this resolved, I believe it's, very, it's vital for us as a country. It's vital to make sure that we get something done. Now, I do know that certainly I can declare an interest in that I held the, the position that the Honorable Minister has now in, in respect of being responsible for the Immigration Department. And the challenge that arose, arose back then. And that's when we started, once we were made aware of it, we started looking at solutions. We have spoken uh, when our Public Accounts Committee had the privilege of going over to the UK. We spoke to people from the UK overseas team to say, what can we do? And they promised that they would take it off. We spoke to the previous minister. This is not something new. We've debated this before. But somehow there seems to be a reluctance on HMPO to give us some resolution to this matter that makes sense. And somehow I believe that we have to, at least we'd like to get an update as to where we stand in resolving this particular issue. The, okay, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm looking now also at um, some of the process times on performance measures under personal services. And let's see, I think I, I'm sorry. I had, sorry, before I, go, before I go to that, the number of work permits processed. We had originally forecast 5,324 for 1819, which has gone down on a revision to 4,614, 4, and it's expected to go to 5,075. So we're looking effectively at, notwithstanding that the revised forecast went down and therefore the new targeted income has gone up, targeted outcome has gone up. We technically are looking at um, 250 decrease from the original forecast from last year to the targeted forecast for this year. So the question begs, what are we doing, as my colleague asked the question, as to where we stand in terms of how whatever immigration reform that is undertaken is likely to impact the numbers that we have, because the more people that we have working and paying into the system, the less pressure the finance minister has to find additional revenue, which is now landing on the shoulders of Mr. and Ms. Bermuda. So the minister has now returned. I will just take my seat and allow him to answer those questions, and I certainly do have more. Minister, are you prepared to respond at this time? Or? Actually, I'm not, Mr. Chairman. I ask your indulgence to have them act, ask all of the questions. And at the end, with your leave, Mr. Chairman, you go through all the questions in the end. So if, 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 if with, your leave, with your leave, Mr. Chairman, what we would like to do is have all the questions asked mm -hmm. now, and then we will just end the end. Um, with your leave, of course, I know this is a matter for you. Um, if you can... 
Uh, members, let me finish listening to the M Mr. minister. Mr. Chairman, I, I could have it wrong, and I crave your indulgence. If it, if it, it, is, if it is at all possible, mm -hmm. I'd like to seek your leave, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. to have uh, my colleagues opposite ask all of the questions now, and then we will proffer all of the answers um, at the end. Mm -hmm. Then they can just ask one, two, three, four of them. If they can go through all, the, all of the questions now, um, then we can answer the questions in the end. It's, it's a matter for you, Mr. Chairman. Uh. Well, Minister, in all, all due respect, we have to acknowledge that this is the opposition's debate, and um, I, I will have to take my, my lead from them on, on this question. Members, are you of uh, the opposition prepared to um, indulge the National Security Minister in his request or or not? Uh, the Chair recognizes uh, the Shadow Minister. Thank you, Thank you Acting Chair. Um, as you stated, this is the opposition, opposition debate and during the debate, oftentimes our questions are generated by responses that the Minister gives. Mm -hmm. So if we wait until give him all the questions and then we can't ask any more questions. We will probably miss out on something. That's why we have this, this ebb and flow, so to speak. If the minister needs additional time to answer the questions, then his technical officer is here, and I'm sure he's getting information from his technical people. He can take, we will, we will be patient, but a lot of times additional questions are generated from the answers that the minister gives. So with that being right. said, we would like to get answers to the questions that have been asked, and then we can continue from there. Thank you. The chair, the chair is inclined to go with the standard format, uh, Minister, so... I'm, I'm guided. There were, I, I yeah, simply we'll, have over, over 50 questions that were, just, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that were asked. Obviously, the technical team are here. I'm making every endeavor to get, get the responses to the lion's share of those questions. I just want to just go to the, the, um, a couple of the questions that were asked, not necessarily in any specific order. There was a question that was asked by members opposite and asked, how did we choose the companies uh, for, the, for the pilot? Um, we've been meeting with a number of the uh, exempted and businesses on Bermuda. And so when they come, they have a number of... Well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me digress. We've been looking at the procedures in immigration and looking at the, the challenges that, that we've been seeing in the immigration process. We have put together a plan to look at immigration line by line and everything surrounding that. So the first, the first phase is how do we make the immigration, the actual work permit process, more robust. How do we get rid of some of the impediments? We have recently secured and we'll be able to announce it in the next couple of days um, one of the five accounting firms that are going to be acting as a management firm to go in immigration and actually look have them open the kimono and look at what all the, the challenges are within the, in the department. A number the, the lion's share of it will be funded by private industry. Private industry, we've been meeting with them um, over the last few months and they've gotten together and they say, listen, these are some of the challenges that we're having and this is how we, we believe that we can, uh, we want to see Bermuda work better. We want to see there, there are opportunities in Bermuda for us to look at doing things differently. And so we've been going on a, proverb, on a proverbial roadshow, sharing with our industry partners how we believe we can make this process better. Over the last three months, we have been meeting with each and every one of the companies that said, listen, these are some of the, the, the benefits of the department. These are some of the challenges that we're having in the department. And so we went on a roadshow, if you please. And one of the challenges that we saw was that a number of businesses were lamenting that they were having a problem with the, 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 the directing their business in a certain uh, manner because they were, it was so difficult for them to go through and work through the work permit process. And they shared with us, and we shared with them, what our long-term plans are. We believe that the program should be re robust. Number one, the ultimate aim for the Department of Immigration is to make sure that Bermudians are being given opportunities that the process is a fair, that there are no roadblocks, and there is a level of accountability in each of these departments. And so when you have the, the, uh, uh, the Board of Immigration, they are simply doing that. They are making sure that each process, that there is qualified remedians are given an opportunity, whether it's with the, through the advertising advertisements in the newspaper, whether it's through the, the, the job being on the job board, uh, the necessary how many days it has to be advertised in the newspaper. So in meeting with a number of the companies, and remember, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a pilot program. This is not something that is etched in stone. This is a pilot program. 
And, I'm get, um, and, and so when we start meeting with different companies, we met with uh, Liberty Mutual. When we met with Liberty Mutual, we realized that they have a, had a firm and deep commitment to Bermuda. We looked at their track record for hiring and moving Bermudians through that particular company. We met with the leadership team. They showed great commitment to being in Bermuda and understanding the tapestry of Bermuda. And when we talked to them, we shared with them, as we did with every one of the companies, the vision that we had for immigration reform. And we chose uh, that company based on uh, what we believe is a commitment to Bermuda, the history of training and developing Bermudians, their, uh, 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 their senior management team and their commitment to Bermuda, their philanthropic uh, um, efforts, and commitment to Bermuda through philanthropy and, and, and investment in, in the social tapestry of Bermuda. The exact same thing with Sumpo. We met with that, the, the, the senior staff. We looked at what they, their commitment to, to Bermuda, um, what their plans have been in Bermuda for, for the last few years, what the development looks like. And we said, if we are indeed going to balance what this new process looks like, we have to be brave. We have to uh, uh, balance what is best for making sure that Bermudians get opportunities, but look at two companies that we believe are leading luminaries in this particular avenue and do work through a pilot program. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's, it's a pilot program in that we're not going to be getting rid of the checks, the balances, um, the ability for them to be held accountable for everyone that's, that, that is within the organization. It's simply a pilot program looking at how do we make the pro program less cumbersome, and if a person is a good corporate citizen, if they do have training and development for Bermudians, if they do have a number of internship programs both locally and abroad that give Bermudians the opportunity to train and develop in Bermuda, well, we have two lines, my words, we have two lines. A line where you go in and you have to have the, the um, advertisement in the newspaper. You have to go on the job board. You have to uh, um, um, show specific things on every, each and every occasion. Then you have a line, which is almost my words again, like the global entry line, where you have, beforehand you've met with the HR director of the company. They've shown you the company's overarching plan for the HR uh, development of the company. They showed you the plan for developing Bermudians within the organization. They show you historically what their, what their uh, trajectory is for the company. They show you the, the, the Bermudians that are in the corporation. They show you the opportunities that Bermudians have for internships locally and abroad. They show you what they're doing with reference to investing in the company. They show you what you're doing phil phil philanthropically with uh, 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 the social elements of Bermuda. And you put all of those elements together and you say, this is a particular company that this is the reason why we chose Sampo and um, Liberty Mutual as the pilot program for um, the jobs program. The chair recognizes the uh, uh, member from constituency 23. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I wonder if the minister could just maybe give us some indication as to the size of these companies. How many employees do, are there in Sampo and how many in Liberty Mutual? Just, just as... I, I, As an idea, I, 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 I can get I, I can get both those numbers. Both 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 of those companies um, have 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 a, have a significant presence. I don't actually have the amount of people in each firm. I can enable to do so and get and get that before before the end of this discussion. You may proceed, Minister. Consultants, there is a an inc there is an increase in the consultative budget. Um, the, a number of part of the consultant, as you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, we will be undertaking a review and, un, an, and a reboot of that particular department. And a part of that is having a consulting firm come in and look under the hood, find out what the strengths, what the weaknesses are, the, the, what they're doing to develop that department, and that will come from the use of a consultancy, of a, of a consultancy firm. And the lion's share of it will be underwritten um, by industry. The, um, there was a question, what are the plans to increase residents to the island, the, the, the overall plan? When we're looking at, the, uh, when we're looking at what we believe a, a healthy economy requires, it, requ it requires a bit of balance, uh, Mr. Chairman. 
we are looking at the department specifically from an, a number of, diff, of, of, of different aspects. We believe that the immigration department, through the immigration board, has always had a robust plan to um, have companies coming in Bermuda. We believe that there are certain developments that are taking place. Um, there are certain developments that are taking place um, in uh, the two, in, two uh, one in one in east and uh, one in the west. And we believe that there is an, there is an opportunity to allow uh, people to come to Bermuda, whether it's through. The hotels, we are going into the hotel season, and so we see a number of, of companies starting to, to ramp up their summer, uh, their summer employment through uh, 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 hiring people. Um, there are a number of exempt companies that, excuse me, um, re reinsurance companies that are looking to come and to set up in Bermuda, whether it's fintech companies. We believe now that we have to have an immigration process that is robust, a department that continues uh, to be available, and have a process that, that is a that is, uh, 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 Transparent. Over the years, the Immigration Act was written in 1956, and over those amount of years, there are a number of nuances and, and parts of the, of, of the Immigration Act that actually makes it very cumbersome. We believe that through looking at the structure of, of, of the work permit policy, the plan is to look at the work permit policy, understand the specific, where are the bottlenecks in the, in the work permit policy, how is this uh, preventing companies from uh, coming to Bermuda, or how is this limiting opportunities from coming to Bermuda? And so when we look at enforcement, on the enforcement side, um, Mr. Chairman, there, this year there has been the, the member opposite asks, what are we doing to uh, highlight the minister opposite asks, what are we, the member opposite asks, what are we doing to highlight Bermudians who are not being given fair opportunities and who are not being given the opportunity to develop in those firms, how are we balancing that? The, 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 a number of times we have the, the specific hotlines. This year, there, were, there was an email address, there was an, 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 a, 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 a confidential hotline that was established by the um, department where people can come in, where they can say, listen, I apply for this job, um, I know as a qualified for, for meetings, or um, I know that somebody's working outside of their work permit at this particular location. That information is given uh, to the enforcement team. The enforcement team actually um, takes their products from the, the online and for the, from the un anonymous uh, uh, calls that are made in, and they then go and um, make, their, make their, their concerns known. Acting Chair? Sir. Uh, the Chair now recognizes the Shadow Minister, Mr. Richards. Thank you, Acting Chair. Um, I'm just trying to follow on with what the minister is saying. So the question I had asked that his answering was uh, Call Center 8285 work permits work and reside where the revenues are down 39% over three years. And as I stated, this was a warning trend. So would the minister agree that it's important to reverse this trend that as Bermuda needs to increase our resident population? I'm trying to, trying to figure out exactly what he's trying to, uh, to, to, to say here. Thank you, Shadow Minister. The Chair now recognizes the Minister of National Security, Mr. Wayne Kane. Mr. Chair, I am I am waiting, I'm working right now with uh, our technical team. Our te technical team are, are getting the specific answers with reference to the, 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 the so we, we have the specific numbers mm -hmm. to that. Um, Thank you, Minister. Are there any other members that wish to uh, address this respective head? Uh, the Chair now recognizes uh, the member from constituency 31, uh, MP Ben Smith. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, looking on page B290, under 8301, status and naturalization, I was wondering if the minister can give us some information regarding uh, the belonger situation in Bermuda. Uh, obviously, this is something uh, being involved with sport has been in the news and, and highlighted. I know that a lot of the national sport organizations are, are interested to know what the overall position is going to be in regards to belongers and, and belongers representation for Bermuda as Bermudian citizens. So if the minister can give uh, some details on what the ministry's position is on this and whether there has been uh, any upcoming details that we can hear that will allow people to have an understanding of representation from a, from a national level 
uh, when it comes to belongers and when it comes to citizens of Bermuda. Thank you. Thank you, member. The chair now recognizes the Minister of National Security. The, the, the issue of the belonger status, is, it, is, it is quite emotive. I've had the opportunity to talk um, informally with the Shadow uh, Minister for Immigration, excuse me, Shadow Minister of National Security, and he and I do understand that this is, this is a very sensitive issue in Bermuda for a number of reasons. We have a, a paper that is due to go to Cabinet any day now with reference to um, the, the, the plan around the belonger status. We will have the opportunity to discuss that within um, the next week at cabinet, and we'll be able to have, have a decision made on that quite soon. It, 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 listen, at the, at the end of the day, we are, um, we, everyone understands the delicate balance that we have with a number of issues. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we are looking to have the issue of mixed status families in parliament and uh, uh, debated and going through the, the, the parliamentary process before parliament is prorogued in, in, in July. And so what, we have, what we've understood is, and if, 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 if you can allow me to digress for a minute, the immigration challenges that we found our, that we found ourselves in is not something that we will get through easy. We are in a position where we have to number one, we have to make sure that the rights of Bermudians are protected. The Immigration and Protection Act. We have to make sure that the rights of Bermudians that they're giving the proper opportunity. There is a delicate balance when understanding that we need international business coming to Bermuda, but at the same time, within that matrix, Bermudians have to be given opportunities. The issues of dealing with status and, 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 and PRCs, this is something that the uh, bipartisan immigration reform group that we're grappling with, this is something that every time we have a discussion, we have to go back to our, our requisite teams and we have to share those issues. And every one, when you see people on the street or when you look at you say, listen, where are we with this? Well, this is not something that is going to have, happen overnight. So let's go back to um, the member opposite and talk about the systematic way that we plan on achieving this. The first part is looking at the processes and procedures around work permit applications, Create, understanding the immigration department, what are, what are creating all the backlogs, what, um, the, digi the digitization process, looking at how do we make this, this, this more robust. That is the phase that we believe is, it's, it's, we're in the phase getting a consulting company coming in, looking at understanding the numbers. The numbers are a challenge. We understand what has happened in the past with other alliterations of this. It has torn this country asunder. With the parliamentary uh, subcommittee, we are looking at these things. We've made a significant progress with the mixed status families. That will come to parliament in, before parliament is prorogued in July. There are some significant issues that have reared their head, and the belongers issue is one of them. We want to uh, dispassionately to be able to look at the belongers issues, understand the court's judgment, understand how it affects Bermuda. The, there has been a recommendation. Um, Minister uh, 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 Walton Brown has written a paper around the belongers issue, and this will go to cabinet uh, um, in, in the next week, and we'll be able to have a position on that going forward. Question on page 2B290, line 8291, land acquisition fees. Why is the two 2018, excuse me, 2019, 2020 estimate 1.5 less than 2018, 2019 forecasts. The answer, the department has adjusted its revenue targets in line with the softness in the market conditions. There is no formal, uh, there, is a, there is not a formal forecasting model being employed. We will need to revert back with the details regarding the drivers in the softness in demand. However, these will be aligned with the same trends seen in the real estate industry. Mr. 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 Chairman, we have um, the, uh, the technical officer has left the room. We have a number of the answers. He's literally just printing those out so I can, so we can, so we can, I, I can answer these questions. I received a number of the answers. Um, I do, I'm not able to literally read the majority of them off of my, off of my phone. So I'm literally, I just asked the technical officer to print out the answers and so I can go through these. So members, we have an opportunity, opportunity now for other members to pose questions uh, on uh, head 27. The chair now recognizes the member from 31. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just following on from the question, uh, thank you to the minister for, for starting to give us some clarity around what we're trying to do, but uh, specifically to the belongers issue when it comes to sport, um, understanding that while this process is happening, the challenge is the teams have to be selected. So in that process, what happens is that um, if a sport is, is specifically trying to, 
to do what you referred to, which is protect Bermudians and Bermudian selection, when you now have this category that has been dealt with in the courts, and that category does not have paperwork to support what has happened in the courts, uh, it puts the sport in a difficult situation where potentially they are going to end up back in the courts. Um, is, there, is there anything that you can speak to that is going to lead to uh, potential paperwork to support what's happened in the courts, or at least something that the sport can do uh, in order for them to prevent further legal action while they are trying to maneuver this situation? I think I th the chair now recognizes the, the Minister of National Security. I, th I think that we, at every aspect, there is a catalyst to prod us that, that could potentially prod us into making decisions without considering the full, the full spectrum of what's to happen. So when we think of how many PRCs there are in Bermuda, people in mixed status families that are in untenable positions, on a daily basis, um, I'm meeting with families that are in absolute untenable positions around mixed status families, not being able to get passports, not being able to travel. We <laughs> simply cannot look at comprehensive immigration reform based on the fires that we have to pull out, put out. We have to look at this in a, in a systematic way. The systematic approach that we have to do this over the last six months, and I was, uh, over the last six months since I've been in the department is, 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 is very clear. The first part of it is to understand each of the significant drivers that are causing this quiet in our country. When we made overt movements, knee-jerk reactions, it tore the country asunder. We're looking at this specifically as, we, as there are the issues of PRCs, there is the issues of status generally, there is the issue of mixed status families, and there is the issue of belongers. These things must be dealt with systematically. There is a plan of the Bermuda government to deal systematically and overtly with the belongers issue. We understand that there are a number of matters that are predicated on the decision being made. A paper will be discussed in cabinet within the next week and we will be able to go through that line by line. Looking at the PRC's issue, if that is not dealt with, that is looming largely, that could potentially be a matter that can be dealt with in the court. But what we have to do is we're taking an act that was written in 1956, we're taking a country that is polarized on a number of fronts. We're talking about international businesses that are trying to look for a pathway to get jobs, to get people into Bermuda, and to make that happen. We believe that there are opportunities through the Job Makers Act to get people, the right people in Bermuda and have them to be in a position. We believe that there are opportunities for us to look at the Belongers Act. Mixed status families. We have said on a committee that the mixed status family, that has to be regularized as a priority. And that is something that we've committed in this House, in the throne speech, that we will look at uh, uh, resolving in uh, before Parliament is prorogued this year. Mr. Mr. Chairman? B829, business unit 2703, is up 35%. Why is that? The figure has decreased by 1%. There is, where are you getting the 35% as an increase? B290, that why are salaries up? Due to incremental change, due to increment changes. Page B290, professional services. What plan does the department have? Professional services relates to the passport processes and payments to World Reach, Her Majesty's Passport Office, and the courier fees. The entry clearance, why is there a decrease of 58%? This relates to fees collected at the airport. The figures are decreased because more frequently than not, more people are arriving with the requisite documents, i.e. work permits and other permissions other permission such as visas, etc. On 285, work permits, work and reside, what plans do the government have to reverse the 90% decline? The emphasis should be on work to reside and not just work permits. Persons apply for permission to work and reside particularly if they are changing jobs. Job changes can result in redundancies and employer, employee relationships, etc. The decline should not be taken negatively. It means that work permit holders may not change jobs as they did in the past. On page 291, why is the head count the same and the salaries are up? Pay scales increment changes, i.e. the pay scale for the Assistant Chief Immigration Officer of the Post was increased. On page B, on page B292, 
on performance indicators, what accounts for the 10% projected increase in work permits? Actually, that, that one is not answered. That one, I'm still waiting for an answer for that. Um, number nine, for civil penalties, why is there a jump from 50, 15 to 148? There has been an increased pace to which the civil penalty cases are being identified and being handled. Thank you, Minister. Uh, members, um, the chair now recognizes the opposition leader. Yes, th thank, thank you very much, Deputy uh, Chair, and good morning. Good morning to everyone in Bermuda. Um, just curious on B290, um, as, I, as I look um, down under the revenue summary, um, I, I was hoping to get a bit of a clearer understanding of the, um, exactly the entrance clearance um, so that the public is aware of exactly what that is and they understand it. The reason I'm asking these few questions is immigration is, of course, one of the very emotive areas. And people, the more detail they have, uh, the better and more comfortable and confident people are going to feel as the minister mets out his duty going forward. Uh, it's very clear here um, that um, there was a precedent set um, um, in the original amount uh, under entrance clearance of 1819, original 78,000, the revised being 96. So it, 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 obviously we've spent more than what we were thinking uh, in the beginning of last year. We were thinking. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a great thing that we've received more. What, was, what exactly was it? And why are we forecasting that it is actually going to be so much less, uh, a third less, actually, in this estimate coming forward in 1920 of 38,000? Um, this, this is telling a story, and I'm just trying to get, get a feeling for exactly what is that story. Uh, also, if you move down, and this was mentioned a few times, um, uh, 8291 land acquisition fees. I, I, I'm assuming what that is, but it would be nice if the uh, uh, minister could uh, give the public a detail of exactly what that is and why, as he mentioned, there was a softness uh, uh, concerning this here. Um, certainly in last year when we started out, um, there was a belief that we would be pulling in seven million. But this is a drastic difference that we actually are a third of that at 2.5 uh, million, uh, 2.4 million, sorry. Uh, and um, again, this is telling us, uh, telling us a storyline here. So we're trying to understand uh, what was the thinking in the beginning of last year as to why we were at the 7 million and now that we're actually coming in. Something has happened, I don't know, machine broke down, I, I don't know. Um, but it'll be nice to get, get the details of that. And if there's a softness in market, if, if we're going to take that as the answer, uh, why it was revised, then why is it then going back up to double? What, what makes them believe that the market is going to be less soft uh, and hardened in 1920 that we can say, oh, well, it's going to be double that amount? Um, it will be actually double that amount of 5.5 million. Um, and so I, I appreciate that. I'd like to get some details on that. I will concur with the minister. Uh, it's certainly immigration is a, a very, very challenging area. Uh, he's, uh, uh, many are excited about the fact that he has taken on this role. Um, and I would just like to say the issue with the belongers, as he mentioned in what he was saying, uh, and mixed status, it's vital that we clear this up. Um, uh, you know, I was just uh, Friday, I mean, we, we left here, I ran into uh, several folk of the mixed status, and uh, yeah, we, 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 just, we just can't have it. And these are young people, all they know is Bermuda. I mean, you talk to them, the Bermudian, through and through. And so I'm looking forward to him clearing that up um, and uh, giving us that update. Uh, again, with the mixed status family, that is something that we together will tackle um, before Parliament is prorogued during the summer. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there, in, the next, in the next two days, there will be a uh, consultancy that will go out to all of Bermuda around restricted and closed categories. This is to a question that was asked by uh, PGP on the other side, the Honorable Member. Uh, she asked a question about what are we doing to protect Bermudians and jobs and Bermudians not being given opportunities. We're going to be doing a, consult a consultancy that will be opened up to all of Bermuda with reference to closed categories, uh, 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 and we're going to we're going to open up to the public to say, what are the categories? These are the categories that are now restricted. These are the categories now that are open. 
what categories would you like to see uh, closed or open and why? What categories would you like to see restricted and why? We have a document that is, that is, being, that is being crafted by the chief immigration officer. And the chief immigration officer um, will then uh, send the document out to industry and they will look like, like uh, at this thing in depth to say, you know what? The tennis, uh, tennis pros, there are a number of tennis pros in, in the island that are saying, listen, we cannot find work in our own country. This should be a restricted or should this be a closed category and or why? Um, there are people in the, in the Gulf and there are people that are saying um, a number of the categories they should believe uh, they should be, they believe should be closed or restricted. This is going to be opened up for people to give the reasons why. This will be an open consultancy period where people can share um, the, the the rationale behind them wanting a uh, uh, category remaining open or being being closed or being restricted. That is a process that will start within the next uh, two weeks. That will be opened up. Um, online, the government portal, where they can go and they can they can uh, uh, look at it and make make their representations. On page B290 and page 8291, the land acquisition fee. Why in 2019-2020 the, estim the estimate for 1.5 billion is less than the two the the 2018-2019 forecast. Wait a minute, it's the same thing. Again, we already answered that. Number four, we've actually, a couple of these questions have been asked already. Passports being processed in the United Kingdom, receiving the wrong code. This is being handled at the cabinet officer by Minister Walton Brown. He's working closely with HMPO. The minister will be traveling to the UK in the not too distant future to have discussions with relevant people on the, on the, on the passport codes. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I'm, 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 with reference to the, the question, I actually didn't get the questions. If I can have some clarity around the questions, um, around um, processing times and perform, pro processing times and performance manage, ma measures. I mean, it's just, it's just where we go. I just want to say, um, I just want to just go through something general. Part of the immigration reform will include improvements to the work permit process. Bermuda needs to shift to a more risk-based approach that is streamlined, and if you are a good corporate citizen that maintains a high assurance uh, and all the proper controls in place uh, through the prospective retrospective audit process, you, so the uh, PGP, the, 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 the member opposite, asks a specific question around how are we choosing the two companies and what does the process look like? And I just want to highlight that with, with the answer. We believe that the, the process of the work permit process has to move to a more risk-based approach that is streamlined where good corporate citizens that maintain high standards of assurance and have proper controls in place through a retrospective audit process that they give opportunities to Bermudians, they contribute significantly to our community, that they have a training and development program that gives Bermudians the opportunity, Bermudians to, uh, the opportunity to matriculate to the highest enchilant of their business and that is evidenced, we believe that there is an opportunity for us to create a global entry line, if you please, a more streamlined process where they do not necessarily have to go through all of the vetting procedures, overt vetting procedures, um, uh, having the, the form uh, uh, gazetted, it going on the job board. They, through a clear, outlined process that is evidenced in their internal mechanisms, allow them to receive um, uh, what we believe is a different Step one is the vetting phase. The pilot will include upfront due diligence on the companies that participate. The government will review detailed submissions from these firms describing their corporate profile, their number and the composition of staffing, their training and development programs, their philanthropic efforts, their wider corporate and social responsibility efforts. The government will engage these companies and to fully understand their particular circumstances and will use this process to pre-certify the firms. The second step is the, is the processing stage. In this phase, the selective companies in the pilot program, they will receive expedited work permit processing within certain parameters in line with their business needs. 
it is envisioned that this will be an electronic process by means of a web-based portal that will be efficient and have a minimal turnaround time. So can we stop there for a second? A big part of the process is that it's a manual process. This process allows people to come in and just by the very nature of it being a manual process, it allows for number one, for significant time um, frames and for human error and for the process to be cumbersome. We're saying you get corporate partners that are saying, number one, we, this is our company profile. This is so much permitting to be hired. And we're saying you're not going to come in and just be able to get a glut of work permits. We're going to create a streamlined online process that is based on a significant risk matrix that's managed. And it is an electronic or an e-application. This is now will be um, a, a, something that we believe will be significant to the, 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 the business community. But to the Bermuda community, uh, Mr. Chairman, it cannot be that we are opening up the floodgates to allow companies to just do whatever they please in Bermuda. The genesis of this and the key part of this is that they will have to show an evidence that they have training programs, that they are committed to Bermuda being here, that Bermudians are matriculating well, that they have tr training and development programs, Mr. Chairman. And I think that's something that we want to stress through this pilot program that will, that will commence with Liberty Mutual and SOMPO. Step three, the monitoring and assessment phase. This phase, the government will assess the impact of this program, this pilot program. We will consult with the industry stakeholders, and if it is successful, we will determine how this will be implemented widely through um, the, the work permit process. It is recognized that this is, in, this, is an ambition, that this is ambitious, and it implies that the policies, processes, and technology will need to be quickly addressed. The government intends to collaborate with industry to make sure this is a reality. In the vision of the Bermuda government's pilot program, the work permit, excuse me, let me take my time, Mr. 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 Chairman. It is the vision of the pilot program that the Bermuda's work permit processing can come in line with other jurisdictions to enable Bermuda to be more competitive and to allow firms to quickly secure intellectual capital required for them to execute their business plans globally. It is, this plan is critical for Bermudian firms to maintain their relevance and for new companies to grow to scale. Thank you, Minister. Uh, the Chair now recognizes the member from 23. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to have a quick look at a couple of the performance measures. Um, page B294, under compliance, 37030. And initially, we had forecast that there'd be four foreign nationals being invited to pack up and leave, um, the original forecast, which actually ended up being 22 on the revised forecast and 24 being the targeted outcome. I wonder if the minister could give us some idea in terms of what this is 37030 compliance, page B294. And I'm just trying to understand where we're going so radically wrong in terms of um, people being put in this position. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether these are based on criminal activities or just overstaying or, or what is, you know, what, what we're capturing in that particular, um, in that, in that particular area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with respect to um, the finance and administration under 37040, we have an original forecast of 4.8 million and a targeted outcome of $4.8 million for the budgeted expenditure by department. And I'm just trying to understand when we're looking at the changes that have been made, um, we had $4.8 million of um, expenditure in 18 or 4.754, which is close enough to 4.8 in 18, 19 original, but we've got 5.254 million in the current year, but the budgeted expenditure by department is showing here at $4.8 million being a targeted outcome. So already the outcome does not tie in with the amount that we have estimated to be expenditure for that period of time. And similarly, the budgeted revenue under the performance measures has indicated that there's 23, there was initially $21 million 
um, a revision of 23.5 million, which we see under the, as an original for 1819, rather than a revised, but in any case, <clears throat> excuse me, the 21 doesn't seem to be accurate, but the 23.5 is a revision, and we're showing a targeted outcome of 23.5 million, whereas the actual number that we've put on the 1920 budget is 21.8 million. So I'm just wondering why our um, performance measure outputs don't tie in with what we're showing now in the budget book. Um, the budget book, as I said, for the um, revenue uh, generated by department, the budget book is saying that the targeted outcome is $23.5 million, but the book is telling us we're going to get $21.835 million. So I'm just curious as to why we have that's <coughs> excuse me, that's a significant differential, um, two million plus dollars, and I'm just wondering, um, well, 21, 23.8, well, no, it's not two million, it's 1.8 million, 1.7 million. But I'm just curious as to why these numbers do not tie, because um, that does not make, you know, it's just trying to link the performance measures as stated in the book to the numbers as stated in the book that there should be a proper correlation, and there isn't. Um, I can leave that question. Thank you, member. Uh, the chair now recognizes the shadow minister, Mr. Richards. Thank you, chair. Uh, thank you. During my original uh, comments, I had referenced on page B290, the revenue summary. Um, of course, under 8293, residence fees. I was looking to get an explanation for those figures, and also uh, core center uh, 8299 nationality. Um, I was looking for an explanation for those numbers. Um, yeah, so I'm still waiting for those answers. Thank you. Um, core center on page B290 under revenue. Course Center 8293, residence fees, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nine lines down, and 8299, nationality, 11 lines down. I was looking to get an explanation for those, those numbers. Thank you. Chair now recognizes the member from constituency 23. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the minister mentioned in one of his responses the uh, Job Makers Act, and I wonder if the minister could just give us some indication as to how many new applications had been made and how many had been processed and approved for the job makers in terms of the qualifying criteria, um, if he could let us know that, and also whether, how many have been approved on job makers, and also whether we have um, any intent of looking at job makers in respect of key individuals in local companies where the local company, where the, where the individual may qualify under the criteria for job makers if the company were foreign, but not being considered because the company, the overarching company, is local. And I'm just wondering whether um, anything is being looked at in that regard. Mr. Speaker, the, the chair recognizes the minister. The Job Makers Act actually comes under the cabinet office and the premier. And so he will be able, in his, in his brief, um, that actually comes under the, the Job Makers Act, does not actually fall under the Department of Immigration. That particular um, act and the, 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 everything that flows from that actually comes under the, the cabinet office under the premier. Thank you, Minister, for that clarification. Yeah, just a clarification, because the actual permits themselves get issued through the department. That has changed? Yes. The, okay. Okay. Having said that, in order, listen, the, 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 the minister signs off on it. The, the actual approval is done by the premier. Okay. Having, having said that, having said that, this is an opportunity 
for us to have a, a holistic debate around immigration, because when a person comes here, they're not going to say, well, Minister Brown is looking at the longest, the Premier is looking at um, uh, incentives for job makers. So what we'll do is we get the information, and I think it's helpful, and it gives, allows us to have the full context of this. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll get it, and I'll, I'll, and I'll present it, because it's very important that we have a complete um, picture of where we're going in, in, in the immigration reform. But I, I would say this before we get the, before we get the, the number, um, because... Um, several people reached out to me when, when they received the uh, when they received the the, the order, um, the order of the order of business. Several people reached out with real big concerns about where we are as a country with reference where we're going with immigration reform. And I think the uh, questions from the members opposite is that we all understand that this is something that's key and that it's important for us to get right. And when we're talking about the incentive for job makers, we are in a, we're in a, at a time as a country that we realize, as, as sometimes we don't understand it, but we actually need people to come to, our, to, come to the Bermuda shores to have the opportunity to work, have the opportunity to, to bring other employments. The, the Incentives for Job Makers Act, the whole ethos around this particular act is to get people in Bermuda that actually can create jobs in the country and to get our, our economy kick-started. The second, the second part, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, 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 and we just spoke about it just now, is understanding where we are with reference to actually Bermudians uh, being in this process. And, and, and it was, there was a, there's a question, question to ask with reference to um, performance measures um, in four, four versus 22 persons being shipped off the islands. These items are different to the forecast. They were dependent on incarcerated persons being released, persons being arrested on warrants with immigration breaches and a number of, a number of other factors. And so what happens is, is when the notion that people are being kicked off our shores and that we're just um, at, at one ton, you know, going and, 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 and going into homes and, and kicking expats off the island, that's a bit of, of, of not what's transpiring. There are a number of people that were incarcerated when they were, at, on their, after their period of incarcerated, uh, incarceration, they were, they were um, asked to leave the island. People that were being arrested on warrants. So if the police stop, whether it's roadside sobriety or whether it's a warrant on a Saturday night, if you're stopped by the police and it is, it is seen or is found that you have overstayed your immigration status, that has an immediate benefit. And so without, without going into the scientific, over the, over the last six months, we've increased the number of road sobriety checks. The road sobriety checks, obviously, for obvious reasons, have led to some what we will only describe as other unintended consequences. Page 290, line 299, the question of nationality. Why are these numbers down? The answer, th these decreased are based on actuals collected over the last two years of 75,000 and 69,000. In other words, we have revised our forecast based on the trend over the medium term. The budget book says, 2.35 million outcome versus 21.8 million dollar outcome. Why doesn't the book align with the forecast? The answer: oh goodness. The department will need to liaise with the budget office to determine why the numbers do not tie together. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we will. We are now reaching out to um, the department. Uh, uh, of the cabinet office to get specific information around the, how many job makers, how many applications that we have, and how many of those were approved. Okay. Members, uh, are there any other members that would care to address uh, head 27? Yeah, I'm still, still waiting for um, answer to um, mm -hmm. line item on B290. Uh, the philosophy or trying to get an understanding of why the market is soft, is like soft and now we're anticipating it to go back hard again uh, or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. uh, strength and um, just want to get a, uh, an idea as to why they believe it's going to be that way the drafts have changed mm -hmm. thank you member chair and I will recognize the member from constituency 23 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, just as a matter of curiosity, does the minister have any indication as to how many items are outstanding by category through the department? I know certainly as minister, I used to get a weekly count on the number of, I'd say, work permit applications that have been presented, how many have been processed, therefore how many have been, how many new ones have come in, how many have been processed and how many are left. We had those on the 20B2B applications. We had those, so on a weekly basis, I used to be able to get a, an, a job count. And the reason for that is to be able to appropriately determine whether we have the appropriate number of staff deployed to be able to process some of the vexatious things that were coming through, vexatious to the applicant because of time delays. And I'm just wondering whether we have still have that kind of process the, to see where we are. The, the, pro, the, proce the process is there, but if you can allow me just for two seconds, and, and, and I hope it doesn't seem as if I'm obfuscating, I just want to share with you what we believe the new, the new direction that we're going to go in is. We believe, um, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, that in the next few months, we have to have a plan for immigration that, is, that totally evolves. And so what the plan is now is, what the plan is now, if, if, you, if you heard from the, in the, the beginning part, is we have to look at what all the impediments are. When you're going to a system that is not digitized and the system is manual, as you know, you literally have to go through each box to try to find out where everything is. There's no way to correlate all the information. There's no way for the systems to talk to each other. And so the, the plan in the, in the near term is to, and th those numbers are available, but I think that is not answer your question, so just allow me to tarry here for two seconds. The plan going forward is for us to have a system that is digitized that allows us to get these numbers ready available. So what I want to do here is not is to answer that question, but to share with what the vision is going for the for the next next year. We have said, listen, the Department of Immigration, they do a yeoman service with what they have. However, when a person comes to the immigration department, they should have a digitized uh, uh, application that when they go online, they're able to see where it is, they're able to understand where they are in the process. Our goal right now is to revamp the work permit process. Our goal is to set a new path. Now remember, we've gone out to industry, they have given us a significant amount of money to help through this process. The uh, uh, consultants, uh, contracts will be signed in the next week. The consultants will be embedded into the Department of Immigration. They will be doing the change management progress that would allow us to have a robust system. Where is the money coming from? Do we have it in the budget? As you can see, there was no increase. This, the majority, if not the lion's share of the cost, will be underwritten by the private sector. And that would allow us to, um, the, the honorable member has highlighted, where are we with those numbers? We can get those numbers. The difficulty of it is we should not have to search for this data. This data should be readily available. And those are some of the challenges that we believe that have, for immigration ministers, well before my time, have lamented that this process is too cumbersome. And that's where the emphasis right now is on, 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 on immigration reform. So give me two seconds, Mr. Chairman. In immigration reform, we get the part that we are going to have to look at belongers, that we are going to have to look at PRCs, and that we're going to have to look at status. That is in train. We believe that for a small to medium enterprise, we believe for a big reinsurance company, we believe that for an upholstery store that has to bring people in, we have to change the work permit process in the department. That is our immediate priority, and that is what we're working towards now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Minister. Uh, the chair now recognizes the member from constituency 12. I will never get voted in in 12. <laughs> you did pretty well in the last go round. No one thought you were going to win there either. <laughs> you delivered. But I'm, I'm sorry, constituency 11, ne right next door to 12. Uh, the, uh, the member from constituency 11, Mr. Christopher Famous. You have the floor, sir. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. I just want to speak um, in support of the minister and to the concerns of the member from Consistency 23. Mm -hmm. um, being on the immigration compre bipartisan, keyword, bipartisan comprehens comprehensive immigration reform committee has afforded myself and fellow MPs such as MP Ben Smith, Leah Scott, and Renee Me, the ability to see the complex nature of 
our present immigration policies. Some, some, some mirror each other, some overlap. It's, it's really almost this tangled, I won't say tangled web, but it's very entangled. Over the last year and a half, we've had near, near weekly meetings. We've had near weekly meetings in order to arrive at some sort of consensus, firstly informed consensus. We've had to have numerous amounts of data coming in. We've had to have persons from the statistics department come in to give us a, a comprehensive, excuse the point, either of the challenges that we have in order to streamline this process. And as the minister has spoken, one part of this process, one crucial part of this process, is what's happening in the back office. There's no way in the year 2020, when I can WhatsApp somebody in Japan, that we, as a, as a pro progressive government, should be having files here, there, and everywhere without us being able to have access to them. So this is, this is a crucial part of that process. And as the minister has outlined, this is not being addressed from out of the national budget, but by, for lack of a better term, corporate citizens who wish to, to help that department. I'll speak more later on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, member, can you just clarify, which committee are, were you referring to? The committee that you, you are a member of? The by keyword, bipartisan, that means people from both sides, comprehensive immigration Reform Committee. Okay. And if, if you return to the subject uh, later, uh, let's see if we can drill down a little more on the respective head and the uh, attendant uh, data that's before us. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other members that wish to uh, address uh, Head 27? While we wait on uh, the pending answers from the minister? The, the chair now recognizes the member from 23. What is the meaning of life? I don't think you figured that out yet, Minister. Um, the question that I have is when it comes to clearing through the through um, border patrol here, coming into Bermuda, um, the system, I know the minister has indicated that there's going to be an investment in a new system. But my, just, my question is, have we seen any improvement more recently with the interim fixes in terms of the processing time for individuals coming through, you know, through Customs and Immigration at the airport? Thank you, Member. The Chair now recognizes the Minister of National Security. The, 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 immigration, the immigration system, we have people from uh, Customs that, that are processing the airport and they do a human service. They are limited with the processing speed based on, on the system that they're using um, by 3A, 3, 3M, a system that is being used, but it is, it is antiquated. It has to then uh, uh, talk to about four different systems. It is indeed at an end of life, and a lot of that system cannot be supported. We've looked at, we have, we have looked at and we've sourced a new border management system. The board, the management system, I think it started under the, the, the uh, members on the Yotania, where they started in two, um, mid-2017, looking at a border management system. They've gone around the world getting the best system for Bermuda. That is going to be in place. We believe that will be robust and, and will be fit for purpose. We've, re we've recently, uh, uh, in the process of implementing this, we believe that when the new airport opens in 2020, that the new border management system um, will be implemented. It will be fit for purpose. It will then do have a lot more processing. It would actually make the airport entrance quite seamless and, 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 and efficient. I believe that when you're considering Bermuda on global standards, when you go to the airport, there is a bit of a wait, and uh, it is predicated on the old systems that we have at IDT and in the use of the, uh, uh, in, in the immigration department. And one of the reasons why we have um, the bu that budget that's included because we're getting a whole new system, and it's it's a system that will be totally robust. It will be relevant. Um, it doesn't include the e-gate which is something that will be needed, and that, that's a different in a supplementary budget. But we believe that we will see a lot more efficient IT-based system 
if I can be allowed to digress again, Mr. Chin, the entire department is moving towards, uh, in the not too distant future, an electronic or digitized process. Right now, the majority of the processes that we see are actually manual. If they're not, in other words, you fill out forms. We believe that a, a pathway going forward through this process is to make, to in, is to make the immigration processes more, more efficient. And a lot of this, you do not need legislation to do. A lot of this is policy. A lot of this is going in there and looking at what the, the efficiencies are. What we did not want is for civil servants who have 50 people in the staff to have a specific budget, who have daily administration to do, to try to get them to then leave their daily responsibilities and go and put together a program and a plan and effective to make it more efficiency, e efficient. And that is why we're using an, the outside entities to help us to make this system more efficient by taking a, an IT-based system that is okay, that is fit for purpose, but we believe that with a new system it will be much more robust. Thank you for that clarification, Minister. The Chair now recognizes once again the, minister, the member from 23. Yes, and I have one more question, and that is, um, we had moved away from the, and this is with respect to, um, let me see where it would come to the administration, but with work permits, um, we had moved away from capturing on exit forms for our young people when people were leaving, that we had moved away from capturing what students are studying. Therefore, we used to be able to have something that tracked that said that they're studying animal husbandry and they'll be finished in three years. Therefore, if a work permit is coming up in that particular area, then we could marry the fact that there is a Bermudian abroad studying XYZ who would be eligible to fill that position. And I'm just wondering whether we're making any progress with that. Um, it was... It was, a, it was a tedious process. At some point in time, I do understand that, and this goes way back before my time, certainly, but it was a tedious process whereby the information was not being effectively captured. However, but now, with new systems being implemented, is this something that the minister is looking at with respect to the new software for the systems that he's going to be implementing, that this information could be captured? And I ask that in, in particularly because if we know what our young people are abroad studying, we know when we're uh, pr um, processing work permit applications, we would have an indication as to whether we will be able to fulfill the requirements or whether, in fact, we still have to allow work permit um, you know, applications to be successful. So I'm just curious to know where we stand in terms of expecting some kind of synergy and correlation between the information that we can gather from our students and their ultimate expectation for being able to find employment when they return. Mm -hmm. Minister, you have the floor. The, the, form, the, former, the former minister actually has obviously has her finger on the pulse and, 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 and knows the majority of this far better than I. The, there is a desire to get the information, but the data mining is actually, it is actually a difficult enterprise because a number of it has to be done manually. And so when you have civil servants in the department, we end up fighting the fires where the, the blaze is the brightest. And so with where we are now with work permits, the emphasis is on making sure the work permits are processed, to make sure the passports are being processed, to make sure that we have the relevant information because we know the shortcomings of the data base and the data catching uh, system. I think to your point exactly, when we have the conversation, the reason why it's important to have this conversation and talk about incoming technology is because we need to highlight the fact that whilst we have the very good intentions to segment the data, to understand how many people are, are in the work permits when they're expiring, we have a system that does not allow for that because it is simply an old system. What we have to do now through this process is get a system, put pieces in there that allows us to, allows us to say what is fit for purpose. Again, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have an internal process. The team will be embedded in the not too, diff, not too, in the not too distant future of consultants coming from the private sector with one of the, one of the, one of the top five, and they're going to look at this thing from soup to nuts. The recommendation is going to be made. It's going to be implemented with the digital strategy. The digital, digital strategy was, is focused around 
fixing the work permit process to make it more robust, to make it more uh, 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 e-friendly, to make sure that it is able to capture, measure, uh, synthesize all the data so we can get the key pieces of information. We have a system that was really good 10 years ago. Now we are 20 years ago. We have now found as, as an aggregate that it is no longer fit for purpose. And we are in the process of, um, of modernizing that process. We, again, have the consultants that have been identified, contract to be started in the not-too-distant future. They'll be embedded in the office in, within weeks. Uh, the chair now recognizes the shadow minister, Mr. Richards. Thank you. While we're still waiting for the minister to get answers, and it looks like it's being handed some now, I wanted to ask the minister, is, is the department capturing the numbers of Bermudians who are emigrating from Bermuda, i.e. leaving Bermuda to live else, elsewhere. I know that in the past these numbers haven't been captured. Is there a desire or anything in place to capture that because, you know, that's information that is very, um, inf not just informative, but critical to our current situation where we have declining birth rates, people having smaller families. So I was curious if the those numbers are being captured, or if there are plans to capture Bermudians who are emigrating from Bermuda. Thank you, member. Mm -hmm. uh, we will endeavor to get that, those specific answers. The question was, does the exit form capture students leaving the island, capturing what studies they are undertaking? Will the new system capture this? The answer is, we are, we are approaching that stage in the immigration reform process. It is not in the first phase. The implementation phase in the implementation phase involves documenting the requirements for systems. When we move into the procurement process, then we will look at in integrating that into potential solutions. Thank you, Minister. The f uh, member, we still are in consideration of Head 27, Immigration. Are there any other members that wish to pose any questions to the Minister? Mr. Chairman, we're waiting two, we're waiting two answers. I'm waiting on two answers. One is ref with reference to the, um, the, the numbers uh, uh, from, from um, Minister Cannonier, and then we have some questions around. How, um, the last question is how many um, incentives for job makers applications were made and how many people um, actually received the incentives for job makers application mm -hmm. permission. Mm -hmm. And how many employees at, um, and that, that's going to be a little more difficult because that, that involves going to the companies and, 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 getting, and getting those numbers. Mm -hmm. So perhaps uh, if, if they can't be obtained today, maybe at a later date, they, they can be conveyed to the... That is correct. ...to the opposition member. Uh, again, anyone else care to pose a question with respect to Head 27 on immigration? We are still here in consideration of the... Uh, that head, the chair now recognizes the uh, member from 31. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was wondering if the minister can give us uh, some information regarding the belongers from a, from a overall, how many applications have been processed recently and how many are in process at the moment for belonger status? We do, we, we, I, I don't have those numbers. Those numbers could be obtained. Um, I, again, um, the belongers issues, we, I would have to get those, get those numbers. Thank you, Minister. Chair now recognizes the shadow minister, Mr. Richards. Thank you, Chair. While we're waiting, so that there's not dead air out there for people listening. Um, on page B292, I don't think I've received an answer to my question that I asked in the earlier part of the debate. Page B292, uh, business unit 37020, permission to acquire land. I had stated that in the year 2018-19, the forecast was at 70, and in 2019-2020, the forecast was at 77, which is a difference of seven permits. 
and I tied it into the revenue from land acquisition fees as shown in Core Center 8291 on page B2290 is projected to increase by just over $3 million, which was an average of 442857 per permit. And I was asking, am I looking at this correctly? This is a correct figure. So I'm still waiting for the answers to that question. And yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you, Member. Uh, is there any other member that would wish to perform yeoman service here? Thank you, the member from 31. Yeah, just try to help out here while the honorable member is waiting for any other answers that are coming. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the member from 23 and, and yes. not 31. Yes, thank you. They say we all look alike. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> Um, I just wonder if the minister could, just for edification from a question that I've received from outside, if the minister could just give us the, an outline of the process and the requirements for letters of permission. Um, it's if somebody wants to bring somebody in to perform a particular task that is short-term in nature, they are required to have a letter of permission from the department. If the minister can just maybe briefly outline what the criteria is, and then that would be the end of my question. Thank you, member. Is there any other member that wishes to address Head 27, Immigration? Are there any members that wish to pose any questions at this time? Mm -hmm. Chair now recognizes the shadow minister. Thank you, Acting Chair. Um, I would like to make a suggestion. Um, we're probably about seven minutes away from lunch. If we can go to lunch early, that would allow time for the minister and his technical team to get off. Questions answered, and then we can reconvene. Yeah. Thank you. Minister, are you of, of like mind? I'm so minded and guided. Thank you. Thank you, too. Uh, uh, thank you for that, that suggestion, uh, Shadow Minister. Uh, the, uh, there's a motion for the House to adjourn. I'll, I'll recognize the Deputy Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do uh, move that we adjourn.